Hey folks, it's Ray at DCVamerica.com here, and today we've got your first hands-on, first couple rides, first impressions, first everythings of the new Peloton Bike Plus. Uh, now this bike I bought myself, just like I bought the older one right there. Uh, in my case, I actually had to drive across the border. I rented a kidnapper van, drove to Germany, picked it up there where it's for sale because it's not here in the Netherlands, but I got it back in one piece and it's working pretty well. So I figured I'd kind of walk through all the things that are different first. I'm not really going to talk in this video about like the core basic Peloton experience. I'll save that for my full in at the review down the road, but I wanted to show you all the crazy nuance differences between the new bike and the old bike and you kind of decide whether or not it's right for you. I'll also show you some of the power accuracy bits that are on the new auto follow feature, uh, all new stuff all the time. I've also got a complete post written as well that you can see on the screen now uh, it's linked down the bottom there uh, so I'm gonna walk through here and then I'll show you some b-roll for me like sweating it out yesterday but you don't really want to see me sweat it out again while I'm trying to talk we're gonna start at the front of the bike and work our way to the back of the bike and this is gonna be like 20 new things and as fast as I can kind of do it so the biggest new thing of course is the display itself uh, the old display went like this up and down but it couldn't swivel. This one can now swivel. Uh, so you can see it goes all the way out this direction and then you can rotate it all the way out again. This direction, it can't go past that point because of the cables. Uh, the idea here though being that you could put it like this and then be down on the floor and do core exercises or some sort of other floor exercises. Uh, and it works well, it's huge. Of course, in this case, I have a screen there. I could actually just cast it to the giant screen, but let's not let details get in the way too much. Uh, on the front, the webcam has been upgraded from five megapixels to eight megapixels and also has a little privacy cover over it now, so you can turn that there. On the back, the cables have been swapped around. They removed the ethernet port, so if you needed wired connectivity, uh, that's no longer there, but you can use a USB-C to ethernet adapter. Haven't tried it yet, but it should work with basically anyone and they're pretty cheap on Amazon and stuff. But that USB port means you can now plug your phone in there to charge, which is kind of handy. You couldn't do that in the past. There's still Wi-Fi, of course, and that's how I have mine connected via Wi-Fi. Uh, in fact, they upgraded the Wi-Fi here, so now it works with uh, five gigahertz Wi-Fi networks as well. Also, speakers have been added. So uh, on the back, there used to be just two speakers on that bike over there, but now there's two speakers in the back and two speakers on the front, which is kind of handy. They removed the headphone jack from the display, but actually moved it down here instead, uh, which makes a lot of sense. So on the old bike, it used to be right here. Uh, and you may say that's not a big difference, except if you've ridden a Peloton bike enough, and depending on what your headphones are, by the time you went from a cable to there to sitting up here, some cables weren't quite that long. If you like lean back, it didn't work. So this gives you an extra roughly like foot and a half or so, and that's probably gonna be a bit appreciated. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you are finding this video useful or interesting or something like that, just simply whack that like button in the bottom right there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Speaking of things up in this general vicinity, the handlebars have been changed slightly. Uh, you can see here a little bit of a straighter section there, just a bump there, some minor, minor differences. Also, all the cables are now internally routed inside of this. Uh, so again, you see them right up into there. So it's a much cleaner uh, routing system versus the past that is sort of hanging out there looking ugly. Uh, next, there's the positioning and adjustment. You've now got these new knobs like this, uh, a lot cleaner, a lot nicer looking. Uh, compared to the past, you had these handles that you had to find just the right spot to make it so it was like straight and it can never be straight. They're just minor things, but they are appreciated. Back here though, you have a little bit of a different seat clamp system. Uh, so you just find the spot you like and then clamp it tight. No big deal. Uh, the weight rack is essentially the same. Uh, the weights do not come with your Peloton bike as I forgot. Uh, so I just stole my weights from my other one and moved them over here. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that Peloton tries to upsell you like on a $200 uh, weight package of sorts with like the shoes and all that kind of stuff. If you don't need all this stuff, just buy just the weights. I think like 29 bucks. Uh, speaking of which, this is obviously not sponsored. I bought all my stuff myself and I'm gonna tell you what's good and what's bad about this bike. So moving again from the front back towards this direction here, uh, new resistance system, uh, which means a new knob. In the old bike, when you turn that resistance knob, uh, it directly moved the resistance on the flywheel down against the flywheel and it slowed the the bike or made it easier. Uh, in this case, it's actually not doing that directly. It's doing it electronically instead. So you turn this all you want uh, and then behind electronics that actually move the resistance system. And that allows them to do the new auto follow feature, which automatically will change the resistance of your workout based on what the instructors are saying. Uh, so that was like basically dumb spin bike style. And this is new smart bike style effectively. Uh, in this case, it uses a stepper motor. So very similar to a lot of indoor smart trainers uh, to make that change. Continuing on back, you'll see, you know, just some different uh, design elements here. Uh, this is a bit more of a darker 
smoky plastic versus that's a, a lighter gray. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then you got the Peloton, a bit of an embossed pop-up versus the sticker that, as you can see on mine, got a bit nicked over time. Uh, and then the seat post and all that stuff is pretty much identical in terms of markings. There's no changes there that I've seen in terms of compatibility, um, like rider height and stuff like that. Finally, working our way to the back here, uh, this is notable. This is now a USB-C charger. So the exact same charger as your laptop. It's a 65 watt USB-C charger, uh, which means I could literally use my MacBook charger to charge a Peloton bike and vice versa for that matter. Oh, and then just one more tiny little thing. You'll notice, for example, the seat is very slightly different with some perforations in it uh, versus the old one doesn't have that. The water bottle cages uh, just make visually look a little bit different, but I mean, otherwise it's all pretty much the same in terms of the overall structure of the bike. Also, in case you're wondering, the pedals that come with the bike are these ones here. I swapped them out for different pedals down there uh, so I can do power meter accuracy testing to test how accurate the bike is. Uh, so in case you're seeing why these two are different pedals than what you would expect in the bike, those are the ones that come with it. These are simply swapped out. So let's go into some of the auto follow features and explain how that works. Okay, so the best way to demonstrate auto follow is probably to show you where it's not. Uh, so the first thing is auto follow does not work on live classes. So anything that's live, it doesn't work on today because Peloton for some unexplainable reason hasn't added the actual resistance levels to the class until a day or five after the class. So that's a bit of a disappointment. There's no reason they couldn't do that. The instructors, of course, have those levels because they have them in their notes as they're speaking uh, during the class. So there's no reason why they couldn't have done that ahead of time. But nonetheless, they're not there. So the way you know whether or not something has the auto follow feature is what happens when you tap on a class there and you scroll down and you see the target metrics listed. Uh, now, to my surprise, actually, this class from four hours ago has it. It didn't have it two hours ago. And yesterday when I looked at classes, a lot of the classes from like last week weren't done yet either. Uh, so it seems like they're getting better here. So my criticism is slowly decreasing because at least they're getting this up and running. But still, there is, in my opinion, zero excuse for those metrics not to be there on such a core feature, uh, either during the live class or especially within moments of the live class finishing and becoming an on-demand class. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go and tap this class again. And then we see those target metrics are right there. We'll click up start there. And now I can choose to go ahead and pair my heart rate monitor. It's paired up to the whip strap right here. Um, or I can choose Bluetooth headphones or and Bluetooth headphones as well. Or I can go ahead and use my Apple Watch to pair to it using Apple Gym Kit. So to use that, you'll simply take your Apple Watch, you put it up next to the Peloton logo or basically next to the camera like this. Uh, it'll then say confirm to start class. In this case, it told me last class, which is weird. So I'll try again. And this is the problem. It doesn't always work. And by always, I mean, I never forgot to work for me. Uh, so sometimes it will show me like the class. I'm gonna go back out again, I guess. Try it again, put it next to the logo. Okay, now it says confirm on Apple Watch or, and then I choose it, but not really confirming. It's just showing it there and then it's starting it, but it's not really doing it. Uh, in any case, that's supposed to work. A lot of the feedback I've seen online says it's super fibbly, fibbly, fiddly, uh, and it doesn't work very well. And that's definitely what I'm seeing here as well. Okay, so now I've reset things away from the Apple Watch. I'm just not going to use it because it's clearly not working. Uh, I'm just going to do it kind of normal style. So in this case, I click on start uh, and I'm going to wait the one minute until the class actually starts so I can show you the auto file. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and get in the bike. So as she starts the class here, here's what's going to happen. Uh, on the resistance there, you'll see that we have this little bubble over it. Uh, and it says 25 to 40 and I'm at 44 right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the lock icon and that turns on the auto follow. Uh, now you'll see it goes to 33 because it's halfway between 25 and 40. By default, when you turn on auto follow, it goes to the midpoint of that particular resistance band. You notice around that lock icon, you'll see that little yellow line is slowly going around. That's effectively like your progress bar for that particular interval. Though keep in mind, sometimes the cadence will change within the interval, so it's not really like a straight notifier of how long till that interval is done because it, the terms of the interval might change by the instructor. Uh, in this case, I can go ahead and slide to the top of the resistance range just by using the resistance knob down here. And you'll see it goes to 40. Uh, and then what'll happen here as we jump into the next set is it'll stay at the upper end of the resistance range for the next set as it adjusts the resistance automatically. So let me show you that. Okay, here we go. And it's jumping up and you can see now it goes to 42 because it keeps the upper end of the resistance range. Uh, now, where things go askew though is if I go beyond that. Let's look right now, I'll just say this is way too easy. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go to 50, for example. Uh, now, in this case, you see it's still locked because the icon is on the yellow uh, lock icon there. But what's gonna happen is when I reach the end of resistance range, it's gonna pull me back into that range up to the upper end. So that's fine for recovery or rest. 
but it's less ideal like this because it's going to pull me all the way back down to 45 as opposed to going up to what would be like, you know, 52 or 53 or something like that. Um, now, of course, I can simply turn this off anytime I want to, and then now I can go where I want to, and it won't matter anymore. But I really wish it would follow where I put myself. It already knows that. It already does that within the range. There's no reason why I can't do that outside of the range. Also, because I forgot to mention this, volume is now on the side right there. So I can decrease volume like this uh, and turn it off. So that's located on the side. It used to be on the back right there, but it's a little bit slightly different position and the buttons are a lot bigger. So what about responsiveness? Well, in terms of responsiveness, it's super responsive from an auto follow standpoint. So I did some bigger ones yesterday, uh, you know, from like 450 watts down to uh, 200 watts, 150 watts. And it took like two, three seconds tops to make that change, which is exactly where I want to see it. So kudos to them on that. That's the norm for smart trainers and smart bikes. So that's good to see there. And when it comes to accuracy, it's also super impressive. Uh, the old bike, Accuracy wise was like verging on dumpster fire, uh, but the new bike, it's just as good as any other smart bike I've tested from any of the major indoor smart, uh, you know, training brands, the Wahoos, Stages, uh, Tax, uh, Watt Bike, it's the same level as those. It's really, really impressive to have a first week device that is the exact same level as those device uh, from an erg, you know, responsiveness and accuracy standpoint. Now there may be some edge cases yet that I haven't quite found in the first couple rides, but the first couple rides cover high cadence, low cadence, high power, low power, uh, shifts in power. And you now one interesting tidbit is Peloton added a reset PR option last week when they introduced this bike, uh, meaning your wattage or your resistance PRs, your output PRs, uh, you can now reset them probably because this bike generally overcommitted all of them. Uh, and for most people, the original Peloton bike usually overshot by again, 10%, 15%, sometimes more. Yep, you can go into the menus under your name and then settings and then personal records, uh, and you can reset all of this stuff here if you want to. So you can go to manage um, and you can say calculate based on workout since a given date. Uh, so that'd be what you probably want to do when you go from that bike to this bike to go ahead and kind of reset things uh, so that they're applicable to this bike and not judging yourself against that sort of overachiever of a bike over there. Okay, so there you go, kind of a complete look at the new Peloton uh, Bike Plus. Overall, I'm impressed. I'm not sure if it's worth, you know, a premium of whatever it is, 500 bucks or something like that, uh, compared to the original bike. Um, I think both bikes are really good in terms of the core Peloton experience, the online platform portion of it. Uh, that's very, very similar for both. So you're not, you're not really changing that too much, uh, but the display is a lot nicer. The ability to see it on the ground is nicer. Uh, and for me personally, the accuracy of that is just, that's sort of the, the big ticket item that would drive me to purchase this one over purchasing uh, the lower end model if I was choosing you know, between the two now. Anyways, if you found this video interesting, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit the subscribe button. There is plenty more sports technology goodness coming over the next, I don't know, couple hours or so and days and, and things like that. So the next week and a half is gonna be pretty packed with new videos uh, here so you won't wanna miss any of those. With that, have a good one.